buy now, pay later schemes have grown in popularity so much that just in Australia alone, there is estimated to be over 6.1 million active users of this service. That is almost a quarter of Australia's population, which is a pretty damning statistic. So let's talk about it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about buy now, pay later services, the impacts they can have on your finances and my take on why I don't believe people should be utilizing these services. For a business, I'm going to say that their motive 99.999% of the time is to make money from their customers. The product or service that they have to offer may be of quality, who knows? It's kind of irrelevant here because overall, I believe their intention is to increase their profit margins. And this creates the need for businesses to innovate and come up with clever ways to convince you, the customer, to spend your hard-earned dollars to line their pockets. Over the past 100 years, marketing has evolved tenfold and the incentives that companies offer make it extremely easy and enticing to justify making purchases. And the incentive that we're discussing today is the buy now, pay later business model. This payment method has been around for decades and some similar but not exact examples would be things like credit cards, lay-by, don't know if anyone has ever experienced lay-by. I remember my mom putting things on lay-by for Christmas and she would slowly pay it off before she could take it home back in the day. One that gets overlooked, but absolutely is a fantastic example, a home loan, where you get to purchase it upfront, enjoy the goodness of it for however long you're living in it, or if it's an investment, the bank's giving you that money upfront and then you slowly chip away and pay it off. It's a buy now, pay later. Kind of scenario. However, the buy now pay later method has evolved where we're seeing companies like Afterpay, ZipPay, PayPal, Pay and For, all these companies that are coming online, making it a lot easier for customers to make purchases and split up the payments into, we'll call them micro transactions, a lot more smaller transactions to eventually pay that item off that they've purchased. And based on the statistics, there is no denying how popular these types of services are amongst the younger generations. Even though these statistics don't yet show buy now pay later services competing with things like credit cards, they are still growing rapidly in popularity and still are relatively new compared to some of the examples I mentioned earlier. This leads me into the main guts of today's video, which is the concerns that come with using these services. Here is exactly what to look out for when utilizing these services to avoid getting caught out and damaging your finances. The first thing to consider is how it might affect your credit score, because almost everyone has some form of debt these days, whether it be a home loan, a personal loan, or a credit card. Failing to make your repayments on time could negatively affect your ability to borrow money. And while it may not be important to you right now to be able to do that, at some point in your life, it may be important. And if it's too late when that time comes, you're going to be stuck. You're gonna be in a position that you don't want to be in. And it's realistically because of the decisions and choices that you made leading up to that point. So now, right now is the time to be aware of it. One of the main reasons these services exist is to attract a certain type of person. Generally, it preys on people who shouldn't be using these types of services because they make it very enticing on sign up without projecting a lot of information about the things that could potentially go wrong, such as the fees that could be accompanied with not making repayments and traps that they could get caught in if they're not careful. Generally, it is the person who's signing up that should be reading that description. It generally gets overlooked and companies know this and they know how to write them in a way that gets them to sign up, start utilizing the service without being aware of the things that could catch them out. Now, not only can this put people into financial struggles, but it can also lock them in for a period of time where they might not be able to pay off the full amount in a timely manner, which then could result in them paying all types of fees like penalty fees, late fees, and interest which will accrue and it will definitely add up over time. Now, at the start of this video, I mentioned roughly the number of people using these services within Australia. And that was just to set the tone. That was to create a snapshot of what this user base looks like in a country like Australia. These services are offered worldwide. So I'm gonna dive into a more interesting statistic, which will build upon what I'm talking about. Now, this is where it gets really scary. Within Australia alone, as of 2021, as of right now, there is approximately 20 billion dollars in bank accounts or credit card accounts which are accruing interest meaning people are being charged interest on that 20 billion dollars this 
is a massive revenue source for banks and they don't want it to go away anytime soon. Buy now pay later services, although not currently competing with the credit card debt, are definitely moving in that direction. Their popularity is growing, people are using them more often. Can you see where I'm going with this? It's going to be the same concept. Credit cards and afterpay services are generally similar in nature. They are predatory and you need to be extremely aware of this if you are someone who uses it, make sure that you pay those balances off in full. Now, in the context of this video, there are two types of rules that I like to follow. The first one is to keep my spending under control. And that is the rule of five. If I cannot afford five of the thing that I'm wanting to buy, I cannot afford it, period. It sounds kind of crazy. There are exceptions here and there, but for the majority of things, if I can't afford five, I cannot afford it. And to expand on this, this is a black and white hard set rule in the ground. This is how I use my credit card in a way that allows me to never pay interest. For context, I've put over $150,000 through my credit card, my personal credit card, not a business credit card, in the last three years, which is quite significant. And I have not ever once been charged a single fee for having that credit card. Not a fee to have the credit card, not a fee for making late repayments, not a fee for overdrawing the account and no interest repayments whatsoever. And that is from this one rule. And that is if I cannot afford to pay it off with the money in my actual bank accounts right now, I cannot afford it. Therefore, I'm not allowed to use my credit card to make a purchase. Sounds crazy because it sounds so simple, but it works. It's not overly complicated to regulate your spending. I know in the early days, it might be a little bit more difficult to shape bad habits, but it's something absolutely worth doing because at the end of the day, you are going to protect yourself from these predatory companies. Now, I'm not insinuating in any way, shape or form that you, the viewer, is someone who would fall into traps like these. I'm merely just trying to bring awareness to the topic because realistically, I know family friends, I know friends and I have direct family as well who have all fallen into these traps before and it's something that can be avoided and at the end of the day it's only going to damage you because you're the person who is going to suffer for having to pay those fees. Hopefully in today's video I have either taught you something or I have refreshed your memory on just how important it is to be up and aware with these types of topics. If you know someone who would benefit from watching this video please share it with them and while you're down in the description please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow and I appreciate the support. Overall, hope you have a good day. Hope you have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.